Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zim. I'm inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, oh, it's a good one, we've got Zim Neo. That's nine in Swedish. <laughs> Zim Neo, and we're going to take a look at the dynamic animation that Zim Neo can do. Here's the Zim site now. We've sort of honored the Zim 9 coming into play with a slightly new look. We'll keep this around for a little while. I'm not sure how long. But uh, anyway, there's the logo up there, Zim Neo, and it is indeed using animation along a path. We're wiggling these little balls in an animation along a path. So you can hit the little angle or just enter there, and you see a bigger version of it here. This was put together in, I don't know, 15 minutes or something like that. It turned out to be pretty cool looking, and we've just left it. <laughs> and we added then on a bunch of different examples uh, of this dynamic animation. And so what we're going to do in this Zim bubbling is take a look through some of these. We'll see how far we get. Uh, but maybe what we'll do is break it into two parts. This is what I'm thinking. Break it into two parts. One just looking through what's here, and then a second one looking through the code. All right, so here's what's in the path. And you can do this too, of course. I'll look through it, but um, I'll talk you through it as well. So we hit the go, and this little thing animates along the path, like so, and hit the no, and it doesn't. But the path uh, is also, you can edit the path, and then it travels along the edited path. Now this, remember, is not you who will be authoring an application, but this is the end user. So as far as I know, this is the one of the only only ones around where the end user can also sit here and edit this path. And I think that's pretty important or powerful as well. And the path can be hidden, so if you want, you can give them an animation that just looks like this, and there'd be no way to see the path. But when you can make a path, maybe it's a good thing to let others make the path as well. So that's that one. orient. You can orient along a path. Now in the last one that did orient along a path and in this one we're going to orient along a path but this, or sorry, not along the path, but we're going to orient towards this little dot that is moving around here. So we hit go and all of those things now are pointing in the middle and now they're pointing to the left. So you can orient to anywhere. I could orient to pragma down here and they would all look at her as it goes, which is sort of creepy looking. <laughs> Sometimes it's like a bunch of little robot thingy-majiggies. Let's just pause the animation and we do that with a no. And we'll grab onto the path. There we are moving it. Wow. Well, I think I did that one first last time. We'll give an eggplant and then hit go again. And now they're all animating along the eggplant again, looking. So it's like a bunch of sh sh swarming little things going some sci-fi movie or something. Pew, 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 pew. All right. And flip along with orient. There's also flip. So uh, right now what we're doing is we are scrubbing the animation. So this is an animation that's just going from here to the corner over here. And instead of playing the animation, we're using the percent complete to scrub how far in the animation we're going. Note that when we go the other way, the eyes flip. And if I go back, it, it's not that they're flipping at the ends. They're flipping based on the direction. So this is uh, a whole sort of system of animation that's actually based on animation. It's, it is still baked into animate, but it's almost meta animation. And then over here, the same deal. As I go down, I go up and it flips up. I go down, it flips down. Note these eyes too are on the right hand side. And then if I change direction at any time, they're on the right hand side, they're on the left hand side. So if I change direction at any time, they're flipping into the right location. Cute, huh? 
There's also corners. Uh, we'll see an example of corners. So now uh, we've, well, we've always had corners, but this is each individual corners now available in an array. So that was flip, and here is speed. So where that one was animating with percent complete, this one is using the slider to change the speed. So it's not a percent complete. I could have done that. So as if I got here, went to the one end of the animation, I got over here, went to the other. But what this is doing is it's changing the speed dynamically of an animation. Isn't that cool? No speed. Here, what we're doing is we're putting all of that into a, an accelerator. So, well, in this case, just two things that we're animating. As I change my mouse position, we're accelerating the speed of that inner one to a certain speed. Well, they're decelerating. And when we go over to the right, we're changing the speed of that other animation. So in the one case, it's looping and we just keep on going and keep on going. In the other animations case, this circle, it's only one animation, so there's no loop on it, which means it will do it at a certain speed here. So the two speeds of those things are interlocked into an accelerator, so you just add things to the accelerator that you want to change the speed of. And then that means to so watch this. We, you see how we're changing the speed of both of them with just our mouse movement there? And then those are both put, being put, or the accelerator is being put into a motion controller, which is, so in other words, no thinking to do this. It is animate like usual, uh, turn the animation dynamic with the dynamic parameter, hey, let's add those two things we just made to an accelerator. Hey, let's add the accelerator to a motion controller. And you get this. Extra. So we've turned this extra with an exclamation mark. Oh, actually, we probably need the explanation mark right there. It's part of the trademark. And what we're doing here is we're animating along a path. So here's the path. And to make it look like it's getting depth, we're making it smaller and also more transparent. So we're making it bigger as it comes closer. And this isn't where it is along the animation because you can see it's bigger here. And then it, and if we wanted to, can I edit this path? Or is that thing in the way? I never thought about that actually. Paths now, by the way, have, uh, let's bring it back here here. So it's bigger here, smaller there. Bigger, smaller. Can't grab that. I can't, I can't grab through that as quick. I didn't really think about that one. I can pick up the whole line there. Now I'll grab that thing. I should have made the squiggle so that I can click through it. I can fix that. And let's so basically what's happening is the Y position of the animation is what is controlling the uh, size, so the scale, but also the depth. So watch as it's going, the depth shifts so that it passes through this and comes up. So we're animating the depth, the fade of it, I call, so that's transparency, and the alpha, um, and the speed as well. This is very important because and we can look at this when we get into the code. If we didn't also change the speed so it's slower farther away, this doesn't look the same. You almost can't tell because it looks relatively natural right now, the, the, the movement here. But as soon as you, that's going half as fast back here as it is up close, you know, that kind of thing. So these things are all extra and extra itself also has a uh, more generic form, which means that you can animate any property of any object based on any property of any object. Usually it's the same object, but it may not, in this case, uh, but it may not be. You could animate how much something else is rotating based on uh, the rotation of this or the, the Y or the X 
of this, etc. So the possibilities are endless on extra. Dragging along a path. So now I can pick this thing up and drag along a path, and there I just threw it backwards. Now I pick it up, let's continue it down forwards, throw it backwards. And it doesn't have to be animating. So this is dragging along the same path that it was at one point going. Here's the path. And again, this is at a neat. Huh? Hello, Dr. Abstract. Here's Pragma down here. Dragging. And then this is all hooked up into Parallax as well, where as I move my mouse up and down, this fellow is going around a path. So that's a percent around the path, except it's uh, more than 100% around the path. And then Parallax is in here. Oh, and the thing in the, the right-hand side, that if I move my mouse over to the left now, I'm moving my mouse to the left, that, that moon is animating. It's just rotating. So that's a rotational animation. And yet it's tied into where my mouse is. So that um, helps you with parallax systems like this. I mean, this is a, a quick parallax system in the back here, or uh, uh, scene, I guess you would call it. And then you can animate two, um, two parts of, of it in the parallax one. Well, which um, depth is in there as well. So the height of it is causing him to go behind that, did you notice? And in front of it. So there's in front, Wee, and there's behind. So that again is the depth that is doing that. The path doesn't uh, follow that, but you usually wouldn't see the path. Isn't that neat? So uh, there's corners as well. Cool how many different different things or how many different things you can make with different that, that's a negative corner, so it sort of cuts it out like that. And here's a corner. This one caught me by surprise. There's just one corner angled like that, and the other one's smooth or round, all the other ones round. You can make little pins to, to put down, and then just rotated that. Pins to put down, or speech bubbles. <laughs> I could <laughs> do with the setting at the back. You need to set the uh, selected color there on those. Somewhere, oh here it is, is a keyboard. Oh, there's the speech bubble. <laughs> Corners, yes. Uh, finally is Pizzazz 4. Click Pizzazz 4, which currently has a, a, a small menu. This is a Zim window with a tile. It was made in about, uh, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes or something like that. 5-10 minutes. A tile. And this one has squiggles. And then you pick a squiggle, and there it is. And from the menu, we pick a roller coaster. And then the idea is you can make it your own. Oh, there, I like one with a loop. Why didn't my roller coaster have a loop? Oh, maybe it did have a loop. I can't remember. A double loop. And then you can get into making your own squiggle of double loops or triple loops. Whoa. Ooh. Ah, oh, cool. What is that that we made? <laughs> that looks like one I've already made. So uh, there's our new roller coaster. And you can view the code, get the code of it. Now, if you want to be precise about things to make it um, the same on other sides, you can actually go in here and put the right numbers in. And then once you put the right numbers in, say we want it, oh no, that's 50. Okay, I don't get that. And we update. I don't know if you could tell that bump just went up just a little bit. <laughs> and so you can match uh, things. And, and don't forget that with this, you can double click on these things and get a, there's, that's what's called straight. And double click again, and this one's independent like that. 
double click again, and it goes into a point. So a point. Double click again, and it comes back to the the mirrored curved line. And there's our last one. Oh, I'm seeing it. Some sort of strange curly cue. That's nice. So if you like that, just click on the code, copy that, and send it to me. Uh, I hit the update to update it, but that doesn't do anything but just update it here in your view. Send it to me on Slack. So hit the Zim Slack and message Dan Zim. That would be cool. And what I'll do is I'll add your squiggle to the, the list of them here. I'll put your name on it in the code. And it's possible if we get a bunch of them, maybe we could put names on these tiles. And don't forget that you can do uh, the different square angles. Actually, this is a squiggle right out of the box. Some of these are right out of the box. Not quite a square. This one's out of the box. This one, this one, this one. That's what a triangle you just... Uh, when you create a squiggle, you can choose which type of control to use for the squiggle. It's just one parameter. And uh, then it will make squiggles with those controls. Ito, mosquito. Oh, those were blobs. And same with squiggles, though. This one, um, somebody on Slack had a question as to how to make a hairpin turn. So that's how to do it. You put points with straight lines in between, and then this point right here is not a hoop. These ones are straight. And by the way, if I refresh this page, refresh, it remembers everything you're at. That's easily done with the transform, uh, tran, uh, transform manager. So transform manager, and you pass the blob and squiggle into it. And it will just naturally remember for you, unless you reset, in which case it will clear it. It's using local storage. So that is Zimneo. The featured docs is a new system in the docs. This is bubbling, so featured docs is also new. So we'll click there. And here are the featured items. Animate, hub. So we've got a new hub. Uh, tap, squiggle, blob, accelerator. So these are some of the things that we're featuring in that series, and then a couple new ones. So a hub lets you hover over with an alpha or a color or actually any property. So there's circle dot setting the alpha to 0.5. Let's zoom in on that a bit. Setting the alpha to 0.5 and then when we hover over it it will be 0.8. Here we are making a new rectangle that's blue and when we hover over it it will be green. Nice huh? A little short chainable hub and there we are hovering over a triangle and that number 1.5 now will be the scale when you hover over it. So it passed two parameters. So that was hub. There's a new top. You just go back to the top here. We talked about hub. There's also tap, and this is quite handy, <laughs> surprisingly handy. We've been putting up with on click for a long time, and that's okay. Uh, one problem with an on click is that it's not chainable. So that means you have to drop out of the chaining to add your event. You could chain it right onto the end, and that would be fine, but if you do that, you no longer really have reference to the object, because chain doesn't return the object. But functionally, if all you're doing is chaining a bunch of stuff, and then you want to add an event, you're never going to use it again. You could chain it onto the end. But I've always felt bad doing that, because uh, then if I ever needed it again, it wouldn't be there. And so it's, it's not a good thing to encourage, because people might not realize that. Uh, however, um, so that's one, one issue. The other, another issue with, with on click is that it is a very lazy click, isn't it? You can, just as long as you press down on an item and then later just press up, later anywhere press up, it's considered a click. And even if you do it three minutes from, from when you press down, it's still a click. And that always kind of bugged me. It's not how it used to be in Flash, I don't think. It's, it's a JavaScript thing. So this tap now is chainable, first of all, so we can chain it. And you have a callback function as to what you want to call, but there's also a default distance that you can move, which is five pixels. So as long as you click down and click up within five pixels from the first click down, 
then it's considered a click as long as it's within the time. We did a bit of experimenting and sort of came to realize that maybe time wasn't important. We thought, you know, maybe it needs to be click like that, just click down, click up, and call that a tap. But uh, we've set the tap to be a fairly large number, like 10 seconds or something. But you can change that too. If a, a tap that has a certain time based to it, you can change that quite easily. And then we're passing through the event the once, which create JS handles in there on event system, which is nice. So if uh, if you want, if you set that true, it will only record this event once. And so that's tap and it's chainable. So here we are saying circle, new circle, set the cursor, set the tap to this function. You got target alpha, stage.update. Nice, huh? Uh, might be that maybe we could have automatically put the cursor of a finger when we roll in on tap. I'm not sure, but you might have wanted not not wanted that. And this just makes it you know, whatever. We'll see how that bubbles. <laughs> we'll see how that bubbles. If we get lazy and everything we're tapping, we want a cursor on there. Uh, that piggybacks through to the CSS cursor, by the way. So uh, any CSS cursor value can be that. Not sure if it is exactly a CSS cursor, but any value in it uh, that CSS has, you can pass into there. Nice! Isn't that cool? And then we're back to the top and we can check some other things out. In these examples, there's been usage of uh, series and style. Um, and as much transform manager to save things, we did some wiggling. We put things into the accelerator and motion controller. But what we'll do is a second bubbling then on um, a second bubbling. Let me get back. Well, just go back to Zim. The second bubbling taking us into the some of the code that handles that stuff. Oh, yes. Ugh. This is Dr. Abstract, inventor Dan Zen, here for what's bubbling at Zim. <laughs> I hope you enjoy all the examples for Zim Neo. Please come on in to the Zim Slack channel. We'd love to hear from you, and hopefully you're starting to use Zim. Ciao! Zimjs.com slash slack is how to, how to get in there and come talk to us. Bye-bye.